This is part 7 of Angular CLI tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the Angular project structure. We already know one of the easiest ways to generate a working Angular project is by using the Angular CLI tool. With this ng new command, we generate a working Angular project out of the box in no time. I've already executed this command and here is the Angular project generated by the Angular CLI tool. As you can see, there are several files and folders in this project. In this video, we'll discuss all these files and folders and their purpose except the source folder and its contents. In our next video, we'll discuss the source folder and its contents. So let's get started with the rest of the files. First, let's look at this package.json. So what is package.json and what does it contain? In short, this package.json file contains the packages to build and run our Angular application. We can also add our own custom scripts. So if we look at this package.json, notice there are two sets of packages, dependencies and dev dependencies. These dependencies are essential for running our Angular application, whereas these dev dependencies are only required to develop the application, which means we don't need these packages on our production servers. Now all these packages under dependencies and dev dependencies are installed into this node modules folder by the node package manager when npm install command is executed. So in addition to the packages, this package.json file can also contain custom scripts. So if we look at this package.json file again, notice we have scripts section right here and the start property is pointing to this command ng serve. So when we execute npm start, it's actually going to execute this command ng serve. And what does ng serve do? It builds the application and starts the server. Now in addition to that, if we also want to launch the browser and open our application within that, we can modify the start property. So instead of just ng serve, we can also include this option dash dash open. So what is this command going to do? It's not only going to build the application and start the server, it's also going to launch the browser and open our application with the net when we execute npm start command. So let's quickly verify this. Let's go back to command prompt, change the directory to our angular project. And then we want to execute this npm start command and behind the scenes, it's going to execute ng serve dash dash open because that's what npm start is pointing to. Look at that, ng serve dash dash open is being executed. There we go, build completed. The server is running in watch mode. We have the browser launched and our application running. Next, we have the node modules folder, which we have just discussed. The node modules folder is right here and we know that whatever packages we have under dependencies and dev dependencies, these packages are installed into this node modules folder. So when we expand that, we can see all the modules right here. Next, we have E2E folder. E2E stands for end-to-end. -end. As the name implies, this folder contains end-to-end -end tests and their configuration files. We'll discuss end-to-end -end tests in detail in our upcoming videos dot angular dash cli dot json this is the angular cli configuration file which is right here we discussed the settings in this file in our previous video next we have dot editor config this is the configuration file for visual studio code which is right here as you can see the settings in this file lets us set certain coding style guidelines for example what in and style do you want spaces are tabs what should be the indent size, etc. We can share this editor configuration file with other developers in our team to maintain consistent coding styles. If you want to learn more about this editor configuration, please visit this URL right here. Next, we have the .gitignore file. This file contains the files and folders that we do not want to check into source control. And that file is right here. Now, one of the folders that we definitely don't want to check into source control is this dist folder. Whenever we build our Angular application, the build results are copied into this dist folder. So we definitely don't want to check that into source control. And that's the reason why it is listed in this git ignore file. So basically, all the files and folders that are listed here are ignored and they are not checked into source control. Karma.conf.js Karma is the unit test runner for Angular applications. 
As the name implies, karma.conf.js is the configuration file for karma and that file is right here. Just like karma.conf.js, we have protractor.conf.js and that file is right here. Protractor is an end-to-end -end test framework for Angular applications. As the name implies, protractor.conf.js is the configuration file for Protractor. Next, we have the readme.md file. As the name implies, this is the readme file. And if we look at this file within Visual Studio Code, notice out of the box, it contains some commonly used Angular CLI commands like ng-serve, ng-generate, ng-build, etc. Now we can enhance this file to include our own project documentation. So if anyone checks out our application, they know the commands to use to build, run and test our application. tsconfig.json TS in the file name stands for TypeScript. As the name implies, this is the TypeScript compiler configuration file. And this file contains several TypeScript compiler settings. For example, if you want your TypeScript code to be automatically compiled to JavaScript when we save the TypeScript file, then set this compile on save property to true. Similarly, if you don't want .map files to be generated, then set source map property to false. Dot .map files are useful when debugging our application. We don't usually need these dot .map files on our production server, so when we do a production build, we usually set this property to false. Finally, we've got tslint.json. Angular has got a built-in linting tool, which checks our TypeScript code for programmatic errors, stylistic errors, and any non-adherence to our coding standards and conventions. tslint.json is the linting configuration file. We'll discuss the settings that we've got in this file in our upcoming videos when we discuss linting in detail. In our next video, we'll discuss the source folder and its contents. Thank you for listening and have a great day.